And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I want to do a quick episode this morning on a couple of electric articles that have come out that have confirmed some rumors that I've heard floating around. A lot of this has to do with what I'm guessing is going to be hardware for on the new platform, and I have a little bit of a thought about all of that at the end that's coming from myself rather than these articles, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, let's talk about this. Let's start with the article from yesterday as I'm recording this from June 10th of 2022. Uh, Tesla secure, secures a multi-billion dollar deal with Samsung for new cameras for self-driving. The important part of this, and of course I will leave the link to all of these in the description if you want to check them out, is that that we are looking at, you know, <clears throat> a three to four billion dollar deal, which will probably be several years. But here's the important part, which is that the components will be supplied this time uh, version 4.0 camera modules with 5 million pixels, which show five times clearer images than the company's 3.0 modules. The most important part, however, is that to everybody's knowledge, the current Tesla solution only has about 1.2 million pixels per camera. So you've got eight cameras, right? So if you take eight cameras times 1.2 million pixels, you've got somewhere around 10 million pixels worth of data. Now you're increasing that to 40 million pixels worth of data with eight cameras. So it's possible that some of these cameras might stay the old ones, like the backup camera and stuff like that might not upgrade to the new Samsung. But anyway, so somewhere in that range, you're looking at a great, great deal more um, pixels <laughs> than were there before. So this, in my mind, number one, it looks like Tesla's created a multi-year deal. So this is going to be a lot of these cameras. Uh, so I believe that it's not really said here, but it seems pretty, pretty evident that they are not going to add these cameras without adding hardware for. It does say that Samsung is planning to get into production with these next, like July, like really, really soon. So, so four to six weeks from now, they're going to be mass producing this for Tesla specifically. I think they've already got these things pretty well, you know, established and they've, they've got a, you know, manufacturing plant working and all of this stuff is already working. So it's not a big deal for them to ramp, but it is specifically a big deal for them to ramp for Tesla. So anyway, all of this is really, really interesting news. It indicates to me that hardware four is definitely coming out sooner rather than later because they're going to need to have, I believe, hardware four in order to process this many pixels. Now, of course, they could add the new cameras and have hardware three in the car and they'll have to have some sort of strip down procedure that basically dumbs the cameras down to the 1.2 megapixels that the hardware three inputs are used to or are interested in. But I think that the full potential of these cameras will not be unlocked until we have hardware four. It's just, I just don't think that hardware three can process the kind of data that we're talking about needing to be processed by these cameras. So I really think that the full potential of these cameras will not be unlocked until we get to hardware four. That brings up another interesting thing that Electric has been talking about and I've seen on, in other places, but this is from a couple of days ago now, but Tesla has filed to use a new radar and everybody is confused used, which is kind of true, you know. <laughs> so famously last year, just about a year ago, Elon Musk, as, as Tesla was moving from a radar based solution to a vision only system, he said that basically the signal to noise ratio was being hurt by radar and vision was so good that they were going to be able to do a vision only system. He did, however, say that a very high resolution radar would be better than pure vision, but such a radar does not exist. I mean, vision with high res radar would be better than pure vision. So that's the little caveat, the little wiggle room that he gave himself. What does this high-res radar look like? Well, a 4D imaging radar is what it could look like. So let's turn to this article that is from 2020. This is a couple of years ago now. Basically, what they're looking at is this solution from Arbe. I think that's how you pronounce it, called the Phoenix Radar. This was a couple of years ago, so it's possible it's not Arbe and it's not the Phoenix anymore, but something along the lines of this type of solution is what I believe Tesla's looking at. So basically what they're, they're talking about here is a 4D radar that's much, much more uh, refined and specific than current radar. So the way that current radar works, like the kind that's in Tesla's, like my Tesla, it's turned off right now because they're using the vision only system. But this kind of radar 
it shoots out a bunch of, of information. It pulses out information and then it receives information back. And what it gets is a bucket of, of, of just information. It's like these things are all moving at zero miles per hour or kilometers per hour. These things are moving at 10 kilometers per hour. These things are moving, relatively speaking to me, at the same speed that I'm going, which is that means that, you know, if they're if you're going 40 kilometers an hour forwards and they're all going 40 kilometers an hour backwards, that means that they're all standing still. So you've got these buckets of points, which actually actually is very complicated to interpret. So things like bridges and things like semi trucks across the road, stuff like that tend to be the same thing in terms of radar. So what you want to get is you want to get something much more like the vision system. And this is where the 4D radar can really, really come in handy. So you can see this, this was Green the Only back in October of 2020 talking about this. Arby has a solution where what they're doing is they're processing this data. So at 30 frames per second, you're actually getting kind of a quasi LIDAR solution. You're getting a real time feedback with information about what's there. So I would assume in another couple of years, the software and hardware has improved. So what they've got is something that's very, very close to the vision system. If they can do semantic segmentation, and if you haven't seen my episode on that, I will link that, but they can do semantic segmentation in radar at 30 frames per second, right? So this is no longer static radar. It's got, I think, 48 transmission and 48 reception channels. So it's got a lot of stuff built in. But the most important part is if it's post-processing all of that stuff into semantic segmentation, this is relatively primitive, right? So this is identifying the human beings as these red blobs here. But, you know, if a couple of years later, it could be substantially better than that. The hardware and software could be producing things that are on the line with vision. So that's what they're talking about here, I believe. So, you know, we've got this uh, this this new um, FCC filing, basically. So Tesla saying, hey, we want to use this and you have to register that with the FCC. And people are always watching Tesla. So, so there you go. You get you get this, you know, once you publicly post something, somebody's going to find it. But apparently this might be a drop in drop in replacement for current radar systems. Uh, which seems interesting because apparently the radar is a little bit larger physically. But anyway, if it can be dropped in and if it's post-processing, and if it's creating something that's along the lines of what Tesla's already doing with their vision system, which is a semantic segmented scene, then you can add that to the scene as further data and that will not degrade the signal to noise ratio. So 4D radar that already pre-does semantic segmentation in some ways could actually have a really big benefit because in situations like fog and rain and snow and just crappy light, you're like you're driving straight into the sun or something like that. And there's just a, you know, it's hard for the cameras to see. It's hard for humans to see in those conditions. The radar can be really, really advantageous if it's very, very highly refined, very specific, and it's able to project out and receive back information on a very, very small scale that can separate things like in, in, in three dimensions and in four dimensions. So it's, if it's using a video, a semantic segmented video solution that Arbe or somebody else might be using, then what you get is you get a, a solution that actually benefits full self-driving. So I think that Elon would stand by what he's saying. Again, I, you know, I, <laughs> we're getting close on the compute power issue, whether Hardware 3 is going to be able to do this. So this, again, this radar system may or may not come into play with Hardware 3, but it could be part of a retrofit package. If they give you Hardware 4 and they give you new cameras and they give you uh, a new radar that drops into the car. So that sounds like a fairly expensive and a little bit intensive upgrade, but most of these things should be pin compatible. So it's just kind of like pop the things off, pop plug in these new things and you get the upgrades that should give you even better performance. So again, they're chasing the nines, right? So maybe you get to 99.999% perfect driving with a vision only system. But what if you could add two more nines to that with a new semantic segmented high resolution 4D radar? If you can do that, then you're talking, then you're actually able to add a couple more nines and the vehicle becomes even safer, especially in these really nasty situations like rain and snow and fog and things like that, where it's just impossible for a vision system to work because it's the laws of physics dictate that. All right, so that is all a bunch of interesting stuff. <clears throat> Now that gets to the part where I'm just going to throw out some ideas here that, uh, well, an idea, I guess, but basically it seems to me like 
you know, Elon has has noted before that the Cybertruck would be the first vehicle that would use Hardware 4. But I say, what if Hardware 4 is about ready right now? What if we're like close to being ready to operate with Hardware 4 and all of the hardware is there, the, the software is being built around it, all of those sorts of things. Why not introduce it in a low volume vehicle first? So something like the Model X or the Model S, where you've got a lower volume vehicle where they can play around with that. It's a higher margin vehicle. So if these things cost more money at the beginning, you can sort of just bury that under it. And in some ways, as long as it's sort of backward compatible with what's going on right now, they could be installing it currently, right? <laughs> it could be being put into vehicles right now or when Samsung begins to ship these in massive quantities in July as Samsung ramps up for Tesla. Here's another really good case, right? Because when the Cybertruck comes out, they're going to make as many as they can because they've got over a million pre-orders for this thing. So they're going to be ramping as, as fast as they can. So why not, you know, get some practice in here with something like the Model S or the Model X that's a low volume vehicle and actually put them in there and maybe tell people that they're there, maybe not, but you could run hardware four in shadow mode because remember, it's gonna be way, way, way more computationally efficient than hardware three. So you could pretty much run a hardware three stack, maybe even an emulation or something like that within the hardware four, but you could then run the hardware four code in shadow mode, which again is just the car making predictions and trying to test itself out. But you could have these two things comparing against each other while human beings are driving or or while the full self-driving hardware three version is driving currently. So I think that Tesla could do that. And if they do that, they could then use that to shake out any bugs in the system, both hardware and software bugs, which would allow them when they get to the Cybertruck and they're doing a much, much faster ramp, not to make a mistake that would require a recall, you know, something that would cause them problems. So Anyway, it's just a thought. We'll see what happens with all of that stuff. But, you know, <laughs> it, I, I would not be surprised. Let's put it that way. I would not be surprised if we see in a month or two that that some of these more low volume vehicles are being given hardware for maybe it would only just be the plaid versions right so maybe not even the regular standard what do they call them long range model s and model x but maybe it would just be the plaid model s and model x so that sort of thing seems to be reasonable they could also then put this this new um radar solution in there so they could try that as well so again you know they could shake out a lot of these hardware and software bugs interactively with a low volume vehicle and it, it wouldn't really matter whether they had the the cost down as much as they want to get down and whether they had all of the stuff perfectly solved so anyway we'll, we'll see what happens but that's a thought to put at the end of this video in the meantime i hope everybody is having a lovely weekend and let me know your thoughts about all of this this is you know i'm, I'm reading a bunch of facts but also speculating a lot on what Tesla is doing behind the scenes. So let me know what you think. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for the help. In fact, it was one of you that actually sent me this uh, electric article. I'd seen it from other places, but I hadn't seen their particular article and it's very, very you know, concise. So it was actually really good to be able to see that. So thank you for that. Of course, don't forget that we've got our merch store. You can check that out in the description. And of course, we are Amazon and Tesla affiliates. So you can check that stuff out. Everything is in the description, including these original articles. In the meantime, everybody have a lovely day. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.